I want to thank you very much for coming on this platform because on Tuesday night, what I saw moved me. I know some individuals refer to Nigeria as a zoo and I get irritated by it. As a professor in the UK, I couldn't take my students to class the next morning. I had to tell all my students, meet me in parliament. I cannot stay in the UK as an advisor to the UK government and look at my fatherland being vandalized by individuals that have no clue. If you are talking about the next election, I think you are dreaming. You haven't read the writing on the wall. We live in a hashtag generation, not an Ali must go generation. This is the post George Floyd era. Smell the coffee and wake up. If you are in any position in Nigeria, you better get this clear. This is a new generation. That's why I had to go with my students to the embassy. From there, we marched on to the, the prime minister's residence and informed him that you don't use live ammunition under any circumstances, on any other person that is unarmed. That is number one rule. Before they gave you the gun, they told you, you use it when somebody else has a gun. But these children did not have guns. They had flags. Thanks to social media, we have verifiable videos and pictures from Lekki. I would have kept maybe a deaf ear if it just continued peacefully. But because you fired live ammunition, you know it's wrong. We don't need a new agenda in Nigeria, by the way. What the youths want are schools, hospitals, better pay for workers. That is no rocket science. This is a global community. If you think that somebody is Yoruba by any way, or Hausa, or Igbo, there's something wrong with your brain. The world does not recognize your little tribal distraction. They're showing photographs of looters. And the prime ministers were trying to show us that they are looters. I said, sir, they are no looters. These are hungry men and women. The real looters, they loot treasury. And the government of the UK, we told them they have to publish the names and account numbers of every single politician in power right now. All their accounts have to be frozen until there is an independent investigation of who shot who at what time. Not the presidential address that came. That's an insult to me, insult to every single investment Nigeria made on my education. How can I be here advising Angela Marco, Francis Marco, and telling them what to do, and my home is on fire, and little innocent children are asking for a basic, ladies and gentlemen, this is basic demand. They didn't ask for a golden elephant. They could have asked for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm appealing to you, if you don't want to join the international community, the diasporans will start and respond to this war because the first bullet has been fired. You don't call bullets to the street and then lie that nobody got hurt and then lie that nobody got killed. Who do you think you're fooling? This is a hashtag generation. And this hashtag generation speak a different language, walk by a different set of rules. Ask Macron with the yellow vest. Ask Biden. Ask Trump. Nigeria is no exception. We have enough tools called mobile phone. We have enough technology. The children have not even asked for broadband. Is there a right to have broadband? Go to Lome, there's broadband. Go to Ghana, there's broadband. The entire West African coast. How can the giant of Africa behave like an ant? I'm saddened. I'm saddened to tears that we can discuss and debate whether there is a president or no president. Prove it. Did Nambi also ask them to shoot with the Fulani killings? We've seen enough. Did anybody tell them also about henchmen? Did anybody tell us about Boko Haram? Come on. The world is not asleep. 
Nigeria may be asleep. My generation that failed Nigeria may be asleep. But these children are going to shake the house until everything is shaken and the, a new Nigeria will emerge, not based on your disturbing constitution that can be manipulated by anybody that can spread money. Your money will not be able to save you because wisdom is bigger than wealth. The information that these children have, you don't know it because none of you understand the power of a mobile phone. Nobody in Nigeria understands what a mobile phone is. The mobile phone that those children have is more powerful than the computing power that NASA had that put a man on the moon. Did you know that? I worked it out. I teach it. I teach informatics. The power of the mobile phone, you don't know. If you knew it, you will give your military one and, and take the guns from them. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I came and this is what I'm intervening for. We are going back to a parliament today. We'll be there tomorrow. We'll be there at the prime minister's house. He knows these real facts and he's going to call all his partners and other uh, Commonwealth countries until we hear the truth. All the banks are going to be frozen. All your bank accounts are going to be frozen. All your passports are going to be revoked if you have a foreign passport. All your visas are going to be revoked. We have made that clear. And we are going back to parliament and we keep saying this and they're going to take us seriously because they've used us in the past to build this nation to have to have their health service we have not to use them to build our fatherland it can be led desolate i thank you for your opinion and i thank you for your audience god bless the federal republic of nigeria thank you very much that was a god very bless you too god bless you that was a very very passionate intervention thank you very much i mean you have said it